Glória a Deus. Nós saudamos. We greet our brethren who are present and those who are following us through Zoom and YouTube, the peace of the Lord. In fact, we want to apologize to the brethren who are watching us through Zoom because we are having technical dif difficulties. Uh, they s I was told that it was not here. It was, it was actually the Zoom app. Forgive us when, when we are singing songs, the sound is not coming out on Zoom. But we have the option of YouTube, so if the brethren want, you can <coughs> go to YouTube and there the sound is perfect. Let's open our Bibles. The Gospel according to Luke. Luke 12. Luke 12. You can remain seated. Everybody's tired. <laughs> no problem. Let me be here alone. Standing. Man, I don't remember. Luke 12, verse 35 and 36. Let your waist be girded in your lamp burning, lamps burning, and you yourself be like men who wait for their master when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knock, they may open to him immediately. Amen. My brethren, this parable is the parable of the vigilant servant. It was told by Jesus in a moment in which Jesus was teaching his disciples, teaching the ones who were with him. And Jesus here was speaking directly to the church, not to the new ones, not to the world, but this parable was told and it was directed towards the people of God. And this message, this parable, make us remember the departure from of the people from Egypt and also received from the part of God through Moses an instruction. And the ones who put in practice, into practice, what God had proclaimed through Mo Moses in a revelation, <coughs> they were preserved. They didn't, there was no death of the firstborn. No defeat happened. The inheritance was passed on. The inheritance was passed on. There was continuity. <coughs> A new phase began from that moment forward because Israel was able then to leave Egypt and started then the moment in which the Lord was like if he was being guided, conducted to the promised land. So the departure of the people of Egypt at that moment there in which the Lord uses Moses to bring to him uh, an instruction of the Lord to the people, it began a preparatory moment for the departure, the departure of the people. And this moment is the moment in which the church, moment that the church today is going through, is a moment of the time called soon. Is the moment prior to the, the rapture. It is the moment in which the church needs to be getting ready. The church needs to be prepared because there is no time to get ready when Jesus returns. So the moment is now. If Israel had not answered 
to the voice of the revelation had not heeded to what Moses had told because they had to do uh, certain requirements there. They had to take a lamb. A lamb had to have a certain size. So there was, it was given to them a couple of a couple of instructions that needed to be followed. They could not, at the moment when the angel was passing by, passing over, first it was a, it would have been already dark. It would, they would not have time to go out there and look for the lamb and stay with the lamb for a couple of days, sacrifice the lamb, live with the lamb, fall in love with the lamb, look to that, that little animal, imagine. Imagine you, you pick up a lamb with no blemish, live with them around in the house, allow the children play with them, the animal, and you f there was a connection, a love. There is a connection with the animal. And that's what the Lord is doing today with the church. We are going through this moment, my brethren. There's no time for us to run away from this. There's no way for us to cancel this. That's why the presbytery has given emphasis to this moment of the time called soon. That's why those messages of revelations and Song of, Song of Solomon's and the parables are going to begin. That's why there's this great movement. I'm not talking about a religious movement. I'm talking about this moment in which we're living. That's why the moving, we have this moving of the Holy Spirit so that we are prepared because the moment is a moment of preparation. The text says the following. Let, the text said, Let your waist be girded and your lamps burning. The same thing happened there in Egypt. You need to eat on the Passover. You need to eat it in haste. You need to be prepared with the staff on your hand and your waist girded, your shoes on your feet. What is to be uh, have a waist girded? We know that was kind of a belt that was placed around the waist and the lumbar part so that you could uh, do your work, chores, your work, this was what was used during the work. This would facilitate the movement, <coughs> help you when you are carrying weight, when you are carrying a heavy weight. It helps you when you do some sort of uh, exercise or an activity. It helps you a lot. And you do this with safety. The worst thing of those fitness uh, gyms is when you go there, you see the individual with the, the skinny legs and with the huge body. You know why they are trying to do this? Because you want to show off carrying big weights. And in the individual who is careful, he follows an instruction. He follows a, a standard. But the ones to, to do this just to show off, they carry weight in a careless way. And it can be dangerous. It's very dangerous. Because you are not ready to carry a heavy load. You are not ready. But when you are properly instructed, when you are properly inside of what is required for you to do certain activities, then there is no problem. And the Bible says, let your waist be girded. You know why? What does the church carry today? What do we carry? What do we have to carry? The Word of God. The salvation in Jesus. So then the church carries the truth. My brethren, carrying the truth is to live and, and living by the word is not easy. 
it's heavy in the sense that in the sense it's hard for you to do this it's hard for you to walk with the truth it's hard for you to be truthful and honest you can't just hide things you cannot hide yourself in the sense of having a life out there was sinful a life of deceiving people of being a bad character and trying to live in the presence of the Lord in this in, in this way it's not possible it's difficult for you to be truthful it's difficult but it's worth it because when the person is truthful they do not suffer they have peace in right the worst thing is when you have this fear inside of you isn't it true this feeling of guilt the feeling of that at any moment the truth will come out it's very difficult it is a heavy load but the church needs to be like this because the church lives this moment to speak of Jesus preaching the gospel proclaim the return of Jesus requires a good testimony requires a definition requires a certain a certain preparation you cannot be speaking about Jesus preaching the gospel and having a crooked life you cannot do this because even the Holy Spirit himself will lead you to make a decision you either will do will be like this or like that maybe you can do this live like this for a long time but there comes a time when the Holy Spirit says enough and being girded having your waist girded is exactly this it's easy to lie lying is very easy to live a lie is very easy Adam and Eve when they when God came close to them and they ate of the fruit of what is the name of the fruit what is the name of the fruit it was a, a red fruit what is the name of the fruit or well, red food and once I, s I did that and somebody answered apple our sister said apple apple you forgot no my sister you're you're coming up the stuff here the bible doesn't say what what kind of fruit it was but when adam and eve they forgot the instruction from god they ate of the fruit when they had been discovered when and it was open up for them the understanding of what sin was God came and the Lord s as said to Adam and Eve hey you had a, a Bible verse for you it was just a single verse that you needed to follow and you were not able to f to obey this verse and then he said well if the blame is on Eve I was I was here on my corner and Eve came but Eve what happened and she said no oh, the serpent and that's how it goes instead of saying oh Lord it was me I went there and ate the fruit it was beautiful I, I you offered me an agreement but I didn't want to obey I uh, rather disobey than obey to lie it's easier right there's no weight but there are consequences that's why in the moment which we're leaving the Lord says have your ways be girded and your lamps burning because and you yourself be like men who wait for their master when he will return from the wedding that when he comes and knocks then they open to him immediately and the word says that the servants they 
kept waiting for the Lord, the Master. They were servants. And when uh, the Master was about to return from an activity that was outside of the house, they needed to be ready because at any moment the owner would, would turn and he would want to be served because the servant, servant serves his master. And the moment in which you are leaving is exactly this. Because when the servant returned, there was not going to be time. Hey, woman, where did you put your, your clothing? Oh, where, where is it? Where is the the belt? How am I going to go open the door? It's always like this. Always, the guilt is always always falls on the woman. In, in spite of that, when things are organized at home, when <laughs> there is a, a movement of organization, all this, my stuff just vanishes. In, in my opinion, my, in my mess, I know where stuff is. When, when then uh, organization falls, then I stay three days, um, three days lost. I can't find this, I can't find that. It's very confusing. But the church needs to get ready. We need to have our lamps burning all the time with our waist girded. Speak about Jesus, carry the truth, carry the word, proclaim the return of Jesus, testifying of this great love, testify of what the Lord has left for us. My brethren, there's nothing better than this. That's why the Holy Spirit has has knocked. That's why the Holy Spirit is persistent. Why the Holy Spirit is bringing lives. We have here a couple of brethren they are getting ready to baptize, and that's what it is. We're going to pray for them so that their decision, we know that it's going to be the, the best choice because there's no other way, there's no other choice than this, that you may, the Lord may bless you and that you become a blessing in God's hands so that the truth that you are carrying may cause you to meet with God so that this truth that you are seeking that you are waiting and hoping for that you have already, have already chosen that for the moment in you, you gave this your name you said I want this it's because the Holy Spirit has already put a stamp on your heart and the Holy Spirit has already shown to you that this is the true path and that it cannot exist anything between you, the church, and God. That's the only way for this to happen is when we relay the truth, carry the truth, carry the word of God, God's advices. Isn't it true? And with our lamps burning, and uh, let, let your waist be girded. Why is that? Because with this, we can only live this in the body, be girded. It is a group of brethren. It's a church that is being prepared by the Holy Spirit. Salvation is individual, but it is lived here. But body, if you seek salvation, God, and is, and say, I accept Jesus as Savior of my life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But you never return to the church. It's going to be very difficult for you to maintain a life saved in Jesus. That's why the Holy Spirit brings us back here. The Spirit is the one that testifies, hey, today is the day to go to the service, the day for you to be blessed. The Holy Spirit put this in our hearts. No matter how tired you are, maybe you thought, oh, today was difficult, I had to face the, the boss and be bothered by him. I have to deal with employees. I have to deal with a very annoying person. But it doesn't matter. When comes time to the service, it's time for us to be here. What happens there? Happened. But now we are here serving the Lord together. We are brethren in Christ. We want to go to the same place. 
you, you may even go ahead of me. I hope, no, I, I want to wait here until Jesus returns. But if it doesn't happen that you go ahead of me, then we are going to go together to heaven, together. There's no way for, uh, for the rapture of the church that, that you, you know, go ahead. No, we are going to be going together. It's on, uh, on a twinkling of an eye. When Jesus returns and begins to call the names, together we are going to go to heaven. So, let your ways be girded. That's why the Holy Spirit has persisted with, persisted with each one of us. He's persisting with you. He's persisting with me. With the love that moves our heart and led us to understand our mistakes and has uh, led us to ask forgiveness to God through the blood of Jesus and seek a life of sanctification. Without it, no one will see God. Allow, allow us to live by faith depending on God. But when this is the time. It needs to be lived right now. Are you ready for this? Is this that God has been speaking to your heart? May the Lord, in this way, give to each one of us a blessing. And that this service may serve as a moment of awakening from the part of the Lord. And that we may have the means. I'll leave him by faith through the Word of God, carrying the Word which is the person of the Lord Jesus. May the Lord bless us. Let's hear our song. Lord to God, let us stand up. The Lord has shown, has given us a couple of spiritual gifts as we were praying for the service. And in one of the spiritual gifts, the Lord was showing the situation of a man. And he has gone through, he has gone, he's, he's going through a situation. He comes to the church and he acts like he's blind. Because for him, it's easier to hide a truth. For him, it's easier to deny the revelation of God. For him, it's easier to live a life of lies, you could say, because the blind is the one that does not see the light. 
the clarity and beauty and glory of God. So when you can see this, and and in spite of that, you prefer to live in darkness. It's because darkness is because you are trying to hide something. Is because you are living a life which is not truth. It's not the truth. My brethren, living in the presence of God is very good. Living in truth is much better. Because truth brings peace. Truth brings tranquility. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. To live in Jesus, when we live in Jesus, we are free. We are not going to be slaves to sin. We're not going to be slaves to the world. We're not going to have a life with the practice of sin. Sin will always exist. There's no way to run away from this. But the practice of sin is what is dangerous. So the servant of God, when he knows the revelation, when he knows the word, when he knows the truth, he runs away from the practice of sin. He runs away from evil. Isn't it true? He runs away from evil. He says no to sin. And first to do this, only the Holy Spirit to give us strength. For you to deny yourself, for you to deny sin, and for you to reject the offerings of the world, only through the Spirit. In the same way, for you to accept Jesus as the Savior of our life, only through the Spirit. Because you go and analyze, if you go and look, there's no way for you on your own to think, oh, I'm, I'm the best. I have already have a good life. I have, I have made it my choice. I've done too much. I'm a good man. I'm, going, I'm good in this and that. This doesn't lead us to anywhere. My brethren, we need to stop living this farce, this farcical life, and leave the blessing that the Lord has for us. My hope is that the Lord may deliver you. Throw these glasses away and this attitude away and come to live the gospel. Come to live in the presence of God. Experience what it is to live in the presence of God. The Lord also has shown, in another spiritual gift, has shown a couple that do not know truly what it is to have an experience with God. They have not had an experience with God yet, a true experience. They have not closely, uh, uh, come closely, uh, a deep experience with the Lord, you see. You try to flourish too much, you end up getting confused. So they have not opened their heart to God yet, and they received recently a material blessing. The Lord has allowed them to receive this material blessing. It's a gift from God. And now they want even, they want to show, to display gratitude. They want to offer something that is material. And that's all right. But the Lord does not want this from us. God does not want any human effort from us. What the Lord wants is a heart, is a volunteering heart, a heart as has made a definition into the Lord and a sincere heart. And that's what man needs, is to accept Jesus with sincerity in their heart. Because when man does that, there will be no repentance. There will be no, oh boy, why did I go to that church? Why did I accept Jesus and now I'm in this difficulty? When man goes to God in this way, the greatest gratitude that we can express to Him is when we give worth to what Jesus has done for us on the cross. And to give worth is to live for this, is to pray to the Lord, ask for forgiveness. And that's what it is to give worth. 
to give value to this, to value these things, and leave what God has done for us through the life of Jesus. Amen. So, what you can do is this. Offer to the Lord. Offer your heart to the Lord. And your willingness to serve Him. Amen. We're going to have a word of prayer quickly. Objective. Word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we glorify your name for everything that I have done for our people, your care, your love, for our teachings, Lord, and most of all, for this important moment in which we are going to meet with you in eternity, Lord. Having an entire eternity, praising your name. We pray for the service, for the lives that have been reached. So that we may never go back to the world and live an eternal life in your presence. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Receive, Lord, our adoration to you. The service is the way. It's a way for us to show that we are thankful to you, Lord, for your deeds, for the doors that are being have been opened, or for our health, for our family for our work, Lord, for everything that you have done and have ministered, your acts of justice, they are being ministered to in our behalf. We praise you because we know that at the end of this week, we are going to have a week of victories, Lord, and we will enter once again in your house with a shout of victory and receive our prayer and take us home in peace so that we may continue having your word remaining in our hearts generating life eternal life the prayer to say are really thankful in the name of Jesus Amen in your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God our eternal Father the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit may be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. We're going to begin our period of, of assistance. I'd like to remind the brethren to be praying for the, uh, the two events that we're going to have with the children, intermediates and adolescents in March, and also for the baptism, right? So that the Lord may be blessing all of those programmings that we're going to have in the month of March. And we wish you all the peace of the Lord Jesus.